and welcome to the Big Happy Life podcast. I'm Natalie and today I am talking to the wonderful Ellie Williams who runs Move Well with Ellie. In this episode, which is part of the Big Happy Book Club series, we are talking about a really wonderful book called What the Foot by Gary Ward. It's a fantastic book for any of you who are experiencing pain, uh, particularly chronic pain and maybe pain that you have been experiencing for years. And the reason that I am talking to Ellie today and the reason why she chose this book is because the things that affect our physiology can so often affect our mental and emotional health. I'm sure if you are in pain, you already know how dramatically it affects your energy levels, your ability to manage relationships, your motivation and all of those things. So in terms of having your big happy life, taking care of your physiology is really important. And Ellie cites What the Foot as a life-changing book in terms of her understanding of how the body works and how to live pain-free. You'll hear in this conversation how Ellie has actually got damage to her spine and that she does live pain-free. So even if you have experienced pain for many years and you have found that you've been to various specialists and you still don't have answers, you may find information in this episode that is really helpful to you. And even if you don't experience chronic pain, you may want to have a listen as Ellie has this mission to talk to people about how to use their bodies so that they can ultimately avoid creating chronic pain conditions in their lives. So as you listen to Ellie talk, you'll hear so many great tips and so much good advice, some of it from the book and some of it from Ellie's own experience. Here's our conversation. <music> I want to ask you about is your title and I actually have to look down and see because <laughs> biomechanics and injury movement specialist oh I know like what this is, is that I know I know this is how do I term me I think of myself a bit like a bio a mechanic of the body so I look at the whole structure what's going on with every single bone to have a knock-on effect so some bones are going to be working really fast Others are going to compensate and move slower, which is then going to cause your um, points of injury. So, for instance, old ankle injuries are gold dust for me. They literally, you think of, I went over on my ankle 20 years ago, it swelled up a bit, thought no more of it. 10 years later, you start getting back pain. Another five, you might get shoulder pain. And everyone looks at the points of pain. So they look at the back pain, they look at the shoulder pain, but no one looks at the old ankle. But if you imagine, the brain is so clever, it really wants to avoid pain. So it's not going to go to the point where it hurts itself. Mm -hmm. So it causes these knock-on effects up the body. So it shifts your weight over to one side. And then so that starts getting a bit like overloaded and worn. And pain's always the last thing to show itself. So the body keeps coping and coping. And then perhaps it starts using your shoulder on the opposite side a bit harder. Um, so that starts getting a bit of pain. And you see your individual people for your backs and your shoulders. But then I come in and look at the whole thing. And I go, okay, we need to look at how you're moving and walking. And look at your injury history oh, you got a lovely old ankle injury that would cause a knock-on effect. So yeah, and then we put, uh, put that into gait, into walking, to rehab you, so you get to um, become balanced and even again. Oh my gosh, that must be so freeing for the people who come to you. Yeah, but it's ever so good for me as well. I mean, I love it. Every person is so different because everyone has all different injuries. So mm. we all got the same bodies, all the same setup, but it's how you've compensated that you want to find the links it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle yeah. every time someone comes in. Yeah. But it's yeah, funny they you walk say away that. learning. Go on, yeah. sorry. No, it's just funny you say it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle because my thing is the mind. Um, <laughs> but when I talk to the, the groups where I'm training, that's often yeah. the exact thing I'll say is that people's behavior is a giant jigsaw puzzle. Like people do yes. weird stuff all the time. Yeah. But if you can solve the jigsaw, you can work out why the behavior is there. So you're doing the same, but you're doing it for the body. So the beauty is that the brain totally comes into the work as well. Because the brain, you, I, I start thinking like a brain or what I would imagine it to be like. And the brain just wants to keep you safe. It wants mm. to keep you safe and it wants to keep you moving. So what would it do to stay safe? And it normally wants to avoid pain. So it's generally going to move away from it. Mm. Sometimes if it has no other option, it might move into it. Um, but then you can start figuring out compensations, twists and turns and kinks. 
and things like comfort zone. I'm sure you deal with comfort zones and nudging the comfort zone all the time. Same yes. thing, because people get scared of movement. They think, oh, this is my norm, and they might be off to the side, and then you start nudging their comfort zone. So, oh my goodness, I feel like I'm going to fall over. It's just because the brain is now having to recalibrate to that new normal. Within seconds, it's like, oh, and the more you do it, the more repetition, like yourself probably with brainy bits, mm -hmm. the more it becomes normal, and that's your new setup. So it's, it's fab. I love it. Oh, wow. Okay, so I know that we're here to talk about your life-changing book, which we will get to in a moment. But before we do, yeah. one of my kind of most engaged listeners, one of the people who contacts me regularly and comments yeah. and asks questions, I know that she has, for the last, I don't know, decade, maybe more, yeah. has mm -hmm. really struggled with back pain. Oh, but for now, from what I can gather, yeah, there's been some degeneration of the spine now. Mm -hmm. So the work that you do, if, if people are listening and they're like, you know, it would be great if I had a quarter 10 years ago, but now the damage is done. And even if I go to you, there's nothing that could be done. Such what, a good question. what would you say? Yeah, such a good question. So if you actually looked at uh, x-ray of my spine, you'd think that I would be in pain all day, every day because I've got wear and tear in the classic L4, L5. I used to ride a lot, had a few whiplash injuries in the car, that sort of thing. So if you looked at my, uh, my x-ray, you'd be like, oh, how are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you not in pain? But the pain is a very funny thing. Like it's, it's the communication between the sight and the brain and anywhere in between. Um, and really it's due to things like stuck compensation patterns. So if you, a really nice, easy thing that she could do is literally look in the mirror. I know that sounds mad and you think, oh, but I would look in the mirror all the time, put makeup on, whatever. But when do you actually look and look at your whole structure? So every session I do with classes or one-to-ones, I always get people to stand and just feel where they feel the weight in their feet. And that's such a telltale because what you'll probably find is you feel, well, I feel more weight in the backs of my feet or fronts or one foot feels heavier and perhaps I feel the weight at the front on one and back of the other. But the feet are the only thing that connects you to the ground. So they tell you so much. So imagine if you've got more weight in the front of one foot and the heel of the back of the other foot, you can then imagine up the body, you're going to have a twist going on. So the classic, how many people are told, oh, I've got a leg length discrepancy. One leg is longer than the other. Mm, oh, me. you've got a twisted, <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. You've got a twisted pelvis, oh my goodness. But the thing is, you should have a twisted pelvis. You just don't want to get stuck there. The pelvis should twist every time you take a step. But if you've got weight in the front of one foot and the heel in the back, that's telling me you've probably got a twist in your pelvis. It's probably got really stuck because you haven't known how to get out of it. So you haven't shown the body the other side of the comfort zone. It's stayed in its little safety zone. And so actually what you start doing is perhaps what would happen if we put uh, the foot that held the weight in the back, put it forwards and started just moving your body weight forwards. Do you then start to balance the foot up? Do you start then taking the pressure from the back of your body, from the lower back, onto the front and begin to untwist the pelvis? It's like magic. So I, the beauty of this work now is I see all the people that have seen loads of other people that are still in pain, but no, there's got to be a reason. And there's no, there's got to be an answer. So yeah, never say never. Um, like I said, my back, you would think, oh, she must be in pain all the time. Never. No, not a chance. So yeah, so there's never uh, an end scenario. I work with all sorts of different people. Um, you just got to be open to the option of change. Is that how you got into the work? Because you were trying to find your own answers? Not so much my, my husband. So um, always been in the movement or really body game. Um, my husband, oh my goodness, about eight years ago, prolapsed a disc walking the dog, kicked the ball for the dog and his back went. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I was sending him to friends. He was going to doctors. No one was taking him seriously. I remember once he turned up at the doctors and he hadn't shaved and he was in his uh, like tracksuit bottoms. He felt awful, so much pain. The doctor told him to go away and, uh, and didn't give him a sick note. Said, come back in two weeks time if it hasn't gone away. He went and back in two weeks later, suited and booted although still in pain, took him seriously that time. So it's funny, the like, perception that mm. um, pain can cause and what it gives off for the people around you. But mm. um, yeah, no, it was solving his. So first <clears throat> his back went, masses of research into different things and uh, what have you. And then I finally came across the book um, at a back conference. 
And I thought, I haven't got time to read it or check it. I'll just buy it. I've got all these different stalls to go to and talks. Started reading it on the train home. And it's like, oh my goodness, I've got to learn this technique. Started learning it. Husband, second time, prolapsed the disc. He just started getting better. Six months of being in pain, started the course and then went again. And um, luckily my mentor at the time came down. I just started. And honestly, within that session, he'd halved the pain. Two weeks later, like nothing had happened. I was like, I have to learn how to do this. This is flipping incredible. So oh yes, so it was solving his that really got me into it. Okay, so you were already in the profession, then you found this book, and because you were looking for answers for your husband, and they, they were in the book. Well, they, were, they were in the book, they started the journey, and then it was going on the course that really started cementing in. And then like anything, like practicing, like the uphill battle that it feels at first of learning something new. And you're just like, oh my gosh, can I not just go back to the old style? But I know that doesn't work. Mm. So you stick with it. And yet, all these years later, here I am. Oh, amazing. Okay, which brings us to the book. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what is the book title? The book is What the Foot by Gary Ward. Um, I love that title. What it's the so foot. good. It's so good. <laughs> And it is a game changer. Um, it's, it's taught me so many different things. It makes me look at the body differently. Mm -hmm. So from the off, I think like the second chapter in, we've got his rants. And the rants are all the things that you kind of think, oh, this is the stuff I've been taught for years, like at uni, different courses, just doing fitness stuff with PTs. Can I give you some examples? Yeah, are, I do. Please. You're going to be like, oh, what? That's not true. So we've got... Um, core stabilization oh do we want to stabilize the core or not oh, how what well, i mean that is just from the off so that's not that's not a thing i mean that's well, isn't what pilates is based on that is yes exactly what pilates is based on but our bodies are designed to move and be mobile and stable when you think of muscles alone all you're doing is you're starting to make something that should be very mobile that moves every single point second of the day should be moving you're binding it down and restricting it so um this is where the, the this is the brain teaser so lower back the little dimples in your lower back these are your si joints and these could be stuck shut classic bit of lower back pain and you could be doing all the pilates work that um you've been told to do i don't know three sessions a week and if you just think of muscles you don't necessarily change the joint position, which means actually you're keeping those joints closed, but making them more stable closed because you're strengthening the muscles at the front. Whereas when you start flipping and thinking, how can I move the bones to affect the muscles, then you get a mobile and stable structure. So you can get your um, more stabilized core, but you want it to be stable and mobile. So it's it's an interesting one it's a bit of the from the off oh my gosh my brain has just blown okay but it's it's fat okay so if i understand that correctly it's not mm. saying then that stabilizing is wrong it's saying it's actually step two and if you haven't done step one you're going to stabilize potentially at Something the wrong that's... point yeah and yeah and and, and really what i'm i want to build with my clients is a stable and mobile structure because i know that when i get them on the force plate they're moving around, they think they're still, but that little uh, cursor on the force plate is moving all over, even though they're trying to keep really still. You're like, don't stay still, just do, just be normal. But it's always moving. So everything in your body is constantly adapting and changing to the information it's being given. So the more you try and bind it down, the more problems that you can end up causing. Because actually we are meant to move. We are meant to move every single bone in our body in 0.6 of a second every time we take a step. So the more you bind it down, the less movement you get, the more other areas might have to start compensating for that stuck spot. Okay. So that's, a, that's a one of the rants, which from the off, you can imagine that I've been brought up, I'm a Pilates instructor as well. So I've been brought up thinking, yes, stabilize the core. And then when I read that, I was like, oh my goodness. Mm. And then I thought about it, and it's like, oh, but actually it does make sense. And oh. Oh, and then it starts making you play around with your work mm. and you get different results. You get better results. You get like, oh, actually, this is good. So, yeah, yeah. so that's, that's an example of a rant. That's so cool. And this is kind of, 
it, it, you talking about playing around because again that's the same phrase i use but Love for that. behavior so i talk yeah. about like my, my daughter gets these um my, my mom bought her a subscription to this thing called tinker crates yeah and so every month this thing arrives and it's like you know they've got to build the structure whatever it is that you know a pendulum oh. or something and it's called a tinker crate because if you put it together at first it doesn't work you tinker with it until it does no. and so yeah. i started talking about that in terms of behavior if you do something and it doesn't work then tinker with it until it yes. does it's just telling you that it's not working yeah and i think what what you're saying here is that that's what the that's what your work is showing but it's also kind of fed from the information in the book is that if if something is still wrong you still need to tinker this is it. I mean, what's was it? Einstein um, doing the same thing constantly is the, the first sign of madness. It really is. Why do we keep looking at the site of pain when actually you've been to so many different people and it's still not going? If anything, it might be making it worse or sending mm. it somewhere else. Look bigger picture. Look at the whole body. Look at the only things that connect you to the ground. What are the feet up to? I tell you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it introduces you to all of these. Do you want a rule? Yes. Shall I give you? Well, so he has five big rules. And we've covered one briefly. The first one is muscles lengthen to contract. Oh, no, sorry. Joints, joints um, act, muscles react. Number two. So we were talking about move the bones to allow the muscles to go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. That's the second rule. So joints act, muscles react. But muscles lengthen to contract. This is another good one. So any PTs or anyone that's into their fitness when listening to this, this is a good one. So imagine when you do a sit-up and you're coming up and you're, you're shortening those abdominal six-pack muscles at the front and you're just asking them to contract. But think about a catapult. If you put a stone in a catapult and you didn't pull it back, it would just fall to the ground. You don't get any power from it. If you lengthen the muscle first... You build the power like pulling the catapult back. So then when you contract, you get a much stronger contraction. So if you did your sit up and instead of just bringing your ribs and pelvis together, if you sent them away first through the whole spine, not just the lower back, because you could fall into the trap of just anchoring from that SI joint, the two dimples. You want that whole spine pelvis to go away from the rib cage that stretches that six pack muscle. So then when you go back the other way, you get such a better contraction of the six pack as you draw the bones together. So muscles lengthen to contract. So um, do I understand that correctly? That you're basically saying, if you're going to do like, put your arms back, put your legs out, and then yeah. contract versus doing a crunch where you're like that the whole yes. time. Yes, okay. exactly. So, and it halves your exercise time. Let me tell you, you can do half the amount of time by just, just sending the bones away from each other to bring them back. You get much better contraction to the muscle. So it's, that's, that is another game changer. That's oh, a good wow. one. Yeah, Easy to put into exercise as well. Yeah. So anything that you don't, same thing, this is a good one. So if your ribs, your ribs and pelvis, every time you take a step should move in opposition. But most people, tend to move as one block. So you never get any lengthen and contraction of those middle muscles. So if you literally just started playing around with, can I stand in front of the sink and block my pelvis and then just move my rib cage? Then if you imagine you've got muscles that attach to your ribs and pelvis. So if you're just moving your rib cage, now I'm getting lengthen and contraction. So that, that I'm getting a core workout whilst brushing my teeth. Whereas if you move them together, look, my fingers don't change position. So mm -hmm. I've got no lengthening and contracting. Things like my hips or my shoulders have to become the brakes. So they become a bit more worn and torn rather than the middle doing the work. Really nice one that you can play around with just getting opposition in. So okay. nice. Amazing. So, okay, so we've got rants, we've got rules. Yeah. What else, what else would you the, say the, is, is in the book that is a life lesson, particularly if I should say, um, particularly the people who are listening to this, um, yes. in the podcast, we look at three things. Um, we look at feeling in control, yep. being able to weather the tough stuff, yep. and being a great role model for your kids. Those are the three things. So we're kind of looking at parents who want to live that big life, but they want to do it in ways that they feel happy, they feel energized, and they can show their kids how to thrive. Um, so if you're thinking about that audience member how does it relate yeah what would be the things in the book that you would say okay here this is going to help you 
Okay, well, this is brilliant because the whole of this book is teaching you to understand that you actually have the perfect body. Even if you might be in pain or you might be having something that's a niggle that's, that's there but on and off, it's teaching you that actually your body has everything it needs to heal. You don't need to necessarily go to someone else to be fixed because that's really disempowering. Whereas if you start to understand how your body works and connects and links together, you understand how that pain might come about. So this was, um, this was brilliant because I used to almost start fearing clients walking through my door before I knew this. Like, what pain are they going to come in? Am I going to be able to solve it? Am I going to be able to come up with the goods that they need? But this way, what you're doing is you're teaching that person to understand what their body is trying to tell them. So it's, it takes the fear out of pain. So rather than getting scared by the pain or the niggle, it's what's my body trying to tell me that I need to listen to to make a change, to take the pressure off, and get rid of it. And even if you can't do it yourself, but you've got this whole database of I've done this and I did this and I tried this and this is what I got, you go to that health professional and you go, this is what I found out about me. Oh my God, they'd love you for that. But it's really empowering you to understand how you work and that you have everything you need inside you to heal. You just might need a little detective like myself or someone to help you understand that language. But once you've got those tools, you've got them for life. You don't need to go and constantly keep seeing me or a chiropractor or an osteo to unstick your stuck spots. And that, that has to be super empowering for yeah. a parent to then show their child that they don't need to go and see anyone else to be fixed. They can yeah. fix themselves. Oh my gosh. You've just, a little light bulb just went off in my head. Love a light bulb moment. I know because the, the language that you just used there by saying, if you don't understand the language of your body, yeah. because again, it's the same thing I have come to realize with regards to emotions, uh -huh. is that that's a language as well. And yes. if you know how to speak that language, you can understand what your emotions are telling you, but we don't all, we're not really taught yeah. how, yeah. To, how to interpret the language of our emotions. So we rather kind of numb them out or ignore them or uh, pretend exactly. they're not there or whatever. But we do the same with pain, possibly because we're afraid or we don't understand it. Yeah, and those things it. are really connected. Is yeah. there anything in the book about that, about the, the link between physiology and emotional or mental health? There, there isn't that I can remember, but that's what I've really taken. And the, the bit that for me stands out is where he talks about the comfort zone. Mm. So if you live in your comfort zone, life is all right, but it's never normally that wow it's, you tick along you do your day-to-day -day, you you're okay but you're just ticking same thing with the body in your comfort zone you can tick along but you might accumulate these compensations as soon as you start nudging it going into that little dark zone area that little bit of fear that comes of the unknown everything always gets nicer if you nudge it if you hurdle into it then you rebound back into your comfort zone and it's like, oh God. And if anything, you recoil away. It yeah. definitely talks about that sort of thing. So if you, so no pain, no gain. I used to love that phrase. Not anymore. Now it's like, oh my God, don't cause pain. You're going to freak your brain out. And we need to get it to feel safe to move into those little dark zones. And as soon as you start stepping in, that's when the brain starts creating the change. And as long as you're nudging it, there's always the good stuff that comes after that. And that could be um, with how you feel bone pressure, bone wise and pain wise in the body. But it's also, I apply it these days to the, to the brain as well. Mm -hmm. So if your emotions really link to holding patterns as well in the body. So that's the step I've guess I've taken from the book from my own journey is that I've gone further into the field of linking um, emotions to pain and movement and how to move you out of that whilst linking in with the pain. And like I said, people understanding how their emotions link to holding patterns and how if you avoid it, it doesn't really go away. If anything gets bigger, it starts brewing. If it doesn't show up in that form, it comes in another. Same thing with the body. If you, if you just ignore that one bit, it will show up somewhere else. And you just, you just got to just embrace that little dark side and start nudging. As long as you feel safe and you've got someone perhaps there helping you or encouraging you, or you've got your support network around you, then actually that's when the good stuff comes. So 
I guess very again very similar in if you're going to do the emotional work or the mental health work or you're going to do the physical work there it's the same work really yeah, yeah um, exactly. and the patterns are the same yeah that's it I'm sure you must have people that with emotional stuff that are in physical pain as well mm. the two are so intertwined it's unbelievable um but it's the fun part and I always think and I sort of start trying to educate and, and help my clients understand that it's not really the end goal yes we all want to get out of pain or we want to move better or get better results in um our sport but actually it's more fun learning the journey once you get to the end and you, you finish it's like oh what happens next it's a very short lived sweet moment of Ta-da! i've reached it i'm over the finish line but actually it's the journey along the way i don't know about you i've had a few road trip holidays and the journey from place to place is quite often the fun bit you don't expect it to be that fun but you're like oh i didn't know that was going to be there and oh wouldn't have seen that if we hadn't taken that route mm -hmm. and that's that's the fun bit that when you get to the end it's not just like this Poof, firework goes off and it all fizzles out it's the yeah. good stuff the yeah. journey is the good bit yeah and, and that's oh gosh again another one Ping. love it because that's that's been the lesson I had to learn in, in finding a, a sense of happiness is yeah. that I kept attaching it to something in the future and yeah. then kind of trying to kill myself to get there. And it finally hit me only when I had the kids that yeah. if I don't enjoy the journey, then it's kind of pointless anyway, yeah. because you know, it's taking two or three years or four years to get something done. And then by the time it's done, you're like, well, if that was four years of hell, yeah. for what? Like, what's the exactly. point? And now I'm here and, and I've got to the end goal and it's, it's good. It wasn't kind of what I dreamt it to be. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't worth all of that. Exactly. So, yeah. exactly. so you have to figure out how to do it in a way that you enjoy it. And I guess that's something, again, that you've taken from what the foot is. Yeah. That it's about, it's about nudging, process. but that that nudge process is done in a way that lights you up it's it's filled yeah. with curiosity and interest yes. and exploration in yeah, just the same way as we would do for emotion you know normally like you go to the physio you get given your homework and it's almost like oh torture where am i gonna find that half an hour of time every single day to do my homework and i don't want clients to feel like that i want them to be excited about learning new things i don't want them to do half an hour of back to back i want quality stuff five minute bursts where it's fun exciting you learn something about you and then you're going to want to do it mm -hmm. rather than making it arduous and strenuous to do it's got to be fun that's the i think playing with um perceptions of pain is the interesting bit so changing your thought patterns what you see it as what you understand it as and then how can i make it fun because the brain learns so much better when it's having fun give it a bit of fun and color oh all day every day yeah um otherwise it's it's hard work you've got to have fun with it you've got to enjoy your journey yeah definitely so i guess that's i mean that's probably from us as opposed to something in the book but really nudges about that touches sense. on it touches yeah. on the comfort zone bit which through then um, putting that into practice, I think that's what I've then discovered. Yeah. So we're, but what we're basically saying is if, if you're going about this, be it emotional health or physical, and of course with the book we're talking, we're talking about your physiology. Phys yeah. But if you're going about it as a, oh, I have to get rid of this pain, I just, it needs to end, mm. the journey itself will become arduous. Whereas and, if you can yeah. bring the perspective of, creativity exploration tinkering yeah, yeah um, tinkering that you have a better chance of a enjoying the journey and b finding out things about yourself that will later prove useful yeah absolutely another actually really nice learn from the book is um rather than forcing the work letting it flow it should your bones should effortlessly move um into either a till a twist or whatever they should be doing in every stage of gait and they should just happen it shouldn't be something that you have to think about happening and the more you sort of force doing homework stuff the more you get that battle and it doesn't happen the more you sort of take your mind out go through the moves and just feel and flow into it uh, the easier it happens the the change happens and the body accepts it as okay this is a normal so 
flowing rather than fighting and that definitely then links into how I've addressed life as well so weirdly learning it about the body and then the more I fight something I must understand Instagram Urgh! oh my goodness it just made me hate it it repelled me from it but the more I started going with the flow and feeling into it the easier it starts to happen same thing with the body and with the brain and that's another word that I use too. My goodness, we're on such a parallel Look journey. It's so funny. <laughs> um, okay, so we know that somebody who's experiencing pain, this book is for them. Yeah. Who else would you say that if you were gonna, if you were gonna say the, the aside from the obvious. Yeah. that you're experiencing back pain or you've been in pain for years, this is a book that you should have a look at. Yeah. Um, anyone else you would say, read this because it will open things up for you in, a, in another way. Ooh, okay, so the obvious one, any Pilates, anyone in their fitness game, read it because it's going to blow your mind all in a good way but you might hate me for the first I know month <laughs> of introducing you to this book um yeah so anyone in not in the fitness profession totally but anyone who likes experimenting with how their body works so understanding how they work how they tick this is a great book because this is our, when I picked this up I don't think I've ever read anything that's so controversial to all the stuff that I learned at uni and school and all that sort of things. It, but they didn't work. They gave me short-term results. Um, they gave me, they gave me good results, but I didn't feel I was empowering the person. So if you want to feel empowered about your body and how it works, this is a really good book for you. It doesn't matter if you're in the fitness profession or you're stuck at a desk all day every day whatever if you want to understand how the link how your body links together and do you want to know my big big aim mm -hmm. okay so the big scary aim is that if you understood this as a child like if this was part of your school routine how to balance your body in five minutes and it was just part of the norm do you ever get to long-term chronic pain that's my thing. So I think there would be parts because I think the emotion plays a big part. But if you understood how to rehab an ankle injury in two minutes flat, would you then have the knock on effect of the lower back pain or the shoulder pain or the neck pain of years to come? If you knew how to check in and just understand where your feet were, where the weight was in your feet. And if you knew that one was heavier and you needed to balance it to become equal. So your rest of your body felt good. Do you ever clock up the compensations to create chronic pain? I don't know. So I'd love, this is where it links to the kids bit. I'd love to get this into schools, but make it fun. Not boring stuff that you have to do, but stuff that you enjoy doing. Then I think it's a game changer for the health profession. Absolutely. Hey, guess what, Ellie? Come on, let's hear it, Natalie. You We've too. Got the same mission. <laughs> Well, it's just the emotional stuff. <laughs> oh, God, look at us, power couple. You I with know. The brain, we with the body. Well, I'm picturing superhero suits and everything. I know. Oh, my God. Double act. Amazing. Oh, totally, totally. Okay, so I have, I have one more question about right. the book. Um, yes. What is the most surprising outcome that you experienced as a result of putting into practice what you learned from it? Oh, uh, if I, oh God, it's got to be about nine years ago that I read this book. And if I thought when I got to the end of the book, my life would be here now, I don't think I'd believe it. And that, that is with the people I see, the client base, base I see now is completely different from what I was seeing back then. Um, my enjoyment from work, completely different. Like I said, I'm starting to get scared about would I be able to fix someone? Whereas, because I still had the fear of pain, whereas mm. now I see pain differently. Um, in myself, would I be where I am now? No, because I don't think I would, I was definitely classic for something, push it to make it happen. Now I know about going with the flow, stuff happens so much easier. So it sounds mad, doesn't it? By reading a book, the clients I see, the way I live my life and all that good stuff is completely different. But that's why it's my game changing book. It really has opened a, it's like sliding doors. I've, I've, it's a different door. It's a, that different route that mm -hmm. I've gone down that if I'd gone 
the same route that I was on, I don't know if I'd be in the same profession because I think I would have got so bogged down with, I'm, I don't just want to patch it. I don't want to be the fixer. I want you to be able to understand and fix you. Mm. So I don't, I don't even think I'd be in the same game. Amazing. How mad's that all happened? I've thought of that before. Yeah, that really is a game changer. Good job I read the book. I know. And good job for everyone <laughs> listening. So um, <laughs> it's, uh, I hope this has inspired anyone listening who is A, experiencing chronic pain or B, on the verge of something that feels like it needs your attention, that I hope this gives you somewhere to focus. The book is called What the Foot by Gary Ward. And I'll put the links in the show notes page. I'm also going to put links to Ellie's website, uh, also Instagram and Facebook. So you'll be able to find her on oh yeah, all the good social media um, opportunities to get in touch with her and connect. Um, I think I want to connect with you because there's a few <laughs> things that I need to get kind of work out the wrinkles yeah um it's been such a huge pleasure talking to you i can't believe oh. how much synchronicity there is between what we're doing just one in emotional health and one in That's it. physical, in physical. Health. it's, it's incredible isn't it what a link i love it yeah just yeah. know that the body's so intertwined you can't separate it they merged beautifully so yes brain stuff links with body stuff um and the whole body links together rather than just separate spots Lovely. Thank you, Natalie, for having me on. Uh, it's been a huge pleasure. I hope we'll speak again. Thank you so much, Ellie. So there you have it. What the Foot by Gary Ward. Ellie talks us through some of the life-changing lessons that she's learned from the book, some of the rants that tell us that most of what we thought to be true actually isn't necessarily true, or at least isn't completely true, and that there are better and easier ways for us to think about our bodies and to examine any pain that we're experiencing. I found that to be true for emotions, she's found that to be true for the body, and I hope that the possibility of tinkering and taking in a kind of curious approach to this whole thing will help free you from the worry and the anxiety that sometimes goes with these experiences. If you need help understanding the language of the body, you can get in touch with Ellie. If you need help understanding the language of emotion, you can get in touch with me. All of the links you need are below in the video description and are also on the show notes page, which you can find at bighappylife.co.uk. If you know anybody who would benefit from hearing this episode or possibly getting the book, then please do share the podcast link or possibly share the link to the book so that you can share the knowledge, share the empowerment and make it possible for all of us to learn and grow together. But for now, once again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.